These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, well, what's up, everybody? It's Grim Green back here today. Does anybody remember very low nicotine cigarettes? Yeah, this was a product out on the market for sale, FDA authorized very low nicotine cigarettes. If, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm not super surprised because their stock price is currently trading for about, about 50 cents, you know, 50 cents a share. By all metrics, just an abject failure, but it wasn't always like this. Just three years ago, their stock was trading for about, I mean, over $1,200 a share. And Every major media outlet, the New York Times were singing the praises of very low nicotine cigarettes, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg News, all singing the praises of these very low nicotine cigarettes. How did this fail so spectacularly? Well, the shorter and much more boring answer ultimately is that nobody wanted them. The consumers didn't want them. 22nd century, very low nicotine products still not resonating with smokers. They just unbelievable. Despite all of the warnings that people who smoke wouldn't like these products, they still put out on the market and look shocked to the surprise of nobody. Hey, look, people who smoke cigarettes aren't interested in these. How does a company who's trading above $1,200 a share Share, suddenly three years later start trading at 50 cents a share. You know, before we get to the longer, cooler version, this is basically just a big AVM thread from Twitter that I think deserves way more exposure. So shout out to the AVM for doing most of the heavy lifting on this. The answer is kind of FDA was 22nd century's biggest customer investor and i think 22nd century was planning on the fda just clearing the market for them you know step one clear the market this explains the millions and millions of vape mdos that happened over the last three years they rake in some huge subsidies from the fda in the form of cigarettes and investments to the tune of what was it now ah uh, yes 125 million dollars the food and drug administration had skin in the game they had a vested interest in very low nicotine cigarettes succeeding, which is why they were, you know, just rushed to market. Very low nicotine cigarettes got on the market quicker than anything I've seen before, certainly quicker than any harm reduction product. This is essentially just irresponsible, wasteful corporate welfare for a company that just failed completely, like failed as a company, failed public health, and failed the taxpayers who helped foot the bill to get these very low nicotine cigarettes quickly onto the market. And that's all just all really very gross. But what's even kind of more gross is that none of the reporters who originally were singing the praises of very low nicotine cigarettes, including the New York Times, including the Wall Street Journal, and including Bloomberg, Tiffany Carey, none of them have managed to pick up on this story of 22nd century and their very low nicotine cigarettes just completely, completely imploding. I know that if I was writing for the New York Times and I was covering tobacco and I had already written about 22nd century, I would definitely also ignore this story. I don't know if the sarcasm really got through there, but this story should not be being ignored. And meanwhile, while FDA is rushing very low nicotine cigarettes to the market, literally millions of vapor product PMTAs have been marketing denied ordered and then, I mean I guess that's why the FDA is being sued by the vapor industry and, and it's going to the Supreme Court. I, I think that's all I have for today everybody. I'd love it if you subscribed but even if you don't let's stay informed, let's think critically, and let's stay cigarette smoke free. You know literally every single day. <coughs> it's like 10 30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke so 